the 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 velociraptor is that velociraptor button down? T Rex. T Rex. Oh yeah. We like to have fun. All right. We like to have fun. It tells me a lot. It says don't fuck with me. A, a velociraptor. A velociraptor the shit out of you. Get over here. You're, you're, you ever do this? You're, no. Are you camera shy? Well. Part of getting into this business is you better get used to this. Oh. I think that really what you need to do is start your narrative and start your storyline. And, and it starts here. It starts now. Start telling me you should be here taking videos of each other, shopping, making reels of this stuff. And this is where we're, we're starting. We're in it. Take me from the beginning of the journey all the way into the end. Put it out there. And that's what I'm saying. This this needs to be no big deal for you. Yeah. What is what what is the main purpose of your business? Um, connection, really, just connecting with people and just um, yeah, bringing it into our area, um, just the aesthetic and what crystals stand for and the spirituality of it. And why? Why? Um, because I think it's. I'm well, my massage business is in there, and I'm starting a hypnotherapy business as well. So it's more just like, I mean. Being a healed, being a healed community that's supporting each other, kind of, yeah, healing. Why? Healing. Why? Because it's important to me. Why? Why is it important to me? Because I believe in healing. Why? <laughs> <laughs> um, because I think it's important for each person's journey, each Why? individual's journey. Because we're all journeying together, and if we can help each other, that's important. How do you know that? How do I know that? I feel that and I believe it in my heart. Now tell me that story on social media. With your heart. From, from, from your heart. Tell me that story on social media. <laughs> okay. okay? Definitely. That's where you start. Okay. How big is the space? It's 700 for the retail space. But that's great because most people don't have an actual business space to operate their business out of. You do, which right. is amazing. And there's not a lot in our area either. So we're really bringing something that's not really even been touched on there yet. When, when you're starting the business, what people are gonna be looking at more than what's actually out for sale is what do you got in there? Mm -hmm. If people walk into your shop and it's just little things on shelves and little knickknacks and paddy wax, yeah. it's, it's not the no. fire you want to start. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So find the big pieces that you're, you, you, you need them. There's, there's, sure. no, there's no way around it. For sure. Do you have a window? Yeah, we have a couple of, so. We have display windows. Can I see? Two yeah, display I'll windows. Here. Computer generated. Oh, those are good. So, those are good. You need to put, you need to put yeah, your pants. You need to put your you need to put your pants stuff in those windows. Yeah. That if I'm walking past that yeah. window, I need you need to stop me in my tracks. Okay. Where did that come from, actually? This is Brazilian, very high quality Brazilian. This comes out of Minas Gerais, so I, I think this is a twenty-two hundred dollar rock. Hmm. Is uh, is there any uh, is there any room in that? You know, you guys are just starting. I, I, I'd love to. I mean, close to close to cost is going to be sixteen hundred. Um, let's. Do, I'll, I'll do fifteen hundred. Okay. That's that's like really the bottom I can go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Deal. Sweet. Thank okay. You. There you go. Thank you. Um, we found From the Mines online um, on Instagram. We just met him today for the first time and hopefully going to be our new supplier. It felt like um, he was, you know, invested in the success and, uh, you know, where we should focus on to be successful. It was just a very easy, seamless, seamless uh, process and in extremely informative. Yeah, lots Ex of education along the way. Extremely informative. Chris is very selfless with giving all the information. These are what's called chromium clusters. Chromium so clusters. the way that these are done uh, is they are points. They're supposed to be points. Uh, sometimes people don't use real points. They use synthetic points. But these are crystal points. They're put into a dish. Oh, okay. Okay, they're put into a dish. 
and then you put water silica in, and then you get water crystals. So these are all water crystals that go around them. You know, out here we have so much material that is so old. The stuff we've had for five, six, seven years, that just gets lost in translation out here because we're not really out here very often. And so one of the great things is, is that as we start going through material and restocking tables and whatnot, we find like old stock material that like stuff you can't even find anymore. As I send stuff out five, six years ago, I totally forget it even exists. I think I'm out of it. And then we find stock of it. These, these are Colombian emeralds. And you know, nowadays these Colombian emeralds like this go for a, a fortune. Like this looks like a tiny little rock, but this thing is worth like 400 bucks, 500 bucks. This was in my stuff. This is a Veracruz amethyst cluster. This is one of the craziest pieces I'm going to say that is going into my collection. People were asking in the Instagram post what the thing was worth and I don't know, man, a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Uh, it's just finding something of this magnitude in Veracruz amethyst, especially because the mines in Veracruz are so dangerous to get to. That's one of the reasons why Veracruz is, is really expensive is because of the danger and the risk involved in mining. Uh, also, the lack of quantity that comes out. It's rare you see dealers with Veracruz, and when you do, the prices are astronomical, like, you know, 20, 30 bucks for just one tiny little point. This is now my storage warehouse where we keep uh, all of the back stock, you know, and when I was saying, these pal some of these pallets have been sitting here wrapped up for five, six, seven years. Uh, we don't even know what's in them. And, and the, it's the fun part of it is that, you know, when you finally get to it and you open it up and you find crazy, crazy stuff, it's like really exciting. And that's one of the things I love about coming out here. I don't even want to take out of the box. Let me bring it outside so we can actually see this thing. It's Gothite from Mexico. <clears throat> it's really fragile. Let me just pull it out. All right. Dude. Naturally formed gothite. I mean, this thing is maybe the best piece of gothite I've ever seen. Usually you don't find them this big, or in, if they are this big, they're usually smashed to smithereens, and this piece is exquisite. I can't hold this much longer. It's really heavy. So another piece that I'm adding to my collection here is this dog tooth calcite. So yeah, essentially it's calcopyrite, which you can see all the calcopyrite here. And then it grew into the dog tooth calcite and then Druze formed on top of it, mixed with the pyrite and gothite. A, a really, really crazy rock. So what I have here is tourmaline with epidote and aquamarine. I mean, it almost looks like a like black hyenite, but it is actually tourmaline with epidote and aquamarine. So you can see these little aquamarines in here, and this is also a piece I'm gonna be adding to my, my private collection. What we put on the property here is this is Carlos's trailer. Well, we're not here. Carlos is here a lot. Mm -hmm. Let me put a little mic on you. A what? So, when I bought this property, it was nothing here. Like, there was no walls here, there was no gates, there was no fences. There was just this decrepit, destroyed fucking building. And my real estate agent at the time told me, he's like, hey, I got this guy, Carlos, who does work for me. You know, maybe you can use him to help you do a couple of things. And, you know, fast forward, what's it been, like over a year now, yeah? A couple years, almost, too. So Carlos came in and, and pretty much did all And now Carlos uh, stays around the property all the time, protects the property. Keep, you know, it, keep it safe and clean. God forbid you're the unlucky person that comes over the fence while Carlos is here. Uh, you got your shotgun? I got a couple of them. He seems like the nicest, sweetest guy, right? Here, this is my handgun, 9 millimeters. It's loaded, watch it. It's a 12 gauge. This is a 22 yeah. with 17 bullets on it. So, so, so this is a pretty much Carlos's, uh, you know, show. Yeah, good, good Don't luck. Don't come inside the fence without asking me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Tucson. You gotta have these things, cause you never know this guy. He's got a lot of valuable stuff in there, and I don't want to be the one who lose it. I got a bit by a snake right here, and um, I was on myself in the desert, and I. Cut it open, suck the blood, and spit it out. Rattlesnake. The rattlesnake. You put it right there, like, you're not worried? No. You ever shoot yourself? Yeah. The 22 right there? Yeah. The little one was cleaning it, and I didn't know I left the bullet in the gym. 
And then when I went to you know, you cock know, it, boom, right on my toe. You still got the toe though. You no, know, well, it's half of it. <laughs> the bees, the harness, they make a nest under the eaves everywhere. Wait to them to get in the nest and just grab them and squish them. So, so you grab the hornet's nest with your bare hand. Yeah. You crush it, it was, throw it on the floor, it on and it. then stomp on it. Not a wasp, not a bee, hornet's nests. Yeah. They poke you? What do you call those? Um, uh, the, uh, the cactus, like the needles? Yeah, the needles, yeah. They're, before they go on my skin, they break. <laughs> There's too many cows. Cactus needles don't cactus him. He cactuses the cactus. <laughs> well, like how Chuck, do you think I brought all those cactus Chuck, Chuck, Chuck Norris hey, kind of shit. And then, this is my fifth wheel. I decided to park it here on the property. You know, we use it for for eating and, you know, whatever it is. But this is my fifth wheel, it stays here. Yo, what's up? It's Chris from The Mines. Welcome to my crib. This is the living room. We've got these couches here. You know, you got heating in the couch. You got lights in the couch. You know, you could sit in the chair. You know what I mean? If you want to get really wild, you can just do that. Well, this is this is where Max sleeps right now on the couch. That's my bed right there. 2022 blow up mattress, the finest thing Target has to offer. We got a Samsung TV. We got fruits. We got a little stove. Just make sure you don't blow us. We almost blew, we almost blew ourselves up a couple times. We got some eggs. Eggs all day. Sometimes there's rattlesnakes underneath here. Uh, I dare not go in Carlos's trailer. That's off limits. Uh, most likely he has the door booby trapped and he will, your face will get blown off with a shotgun. Uh, and that's actually probably true. The craziest um, thing ever happened to you. I you jump, can talk about. I jumped on the train and I got up on Juma. Long time ago, I was a kid. I was hungry, I wanted to be in the USA, you know, the dream thing. And Juma, I got in the train. And jumping, running the train, it was, the train was doing like 60 miles, so I was running right next to it. Grab the stair, the, the, the stairs, and my legs were like, <laughs> I was skinnier and little. And I got, got a hold of that thing, I jumped on it, I slipped, and I grabbed the last one, my feet were rocking on the ground, that was lucky. So I got out, I started running, and there was fence all the way, I don't know how I was gonna get out, so as I was running, I picked up a stick with the road trucks, and running, and I pushed the fence up, and I slide right through it. I got stuck in the fence right here in my ass. And they got my legs, they were pulling me back, and I pulled forward, and worse. So you got away? I got away, I was 13 years old. 13. 13 years old. <laughs> yeah. Man, you, you, that story makes me cry, dude. I was up, cold, but I made it. Yeah, you fing made it. You're the uh, man. I gotta go. All right. Thank you, man. One of my favorite things to do when I'm out here in Arizona, if not my favorite thing to do, I try and I, I definitely do it every trip, is I, I visit the uh, Xavier, San Xavier Church uh, out here in Tucson. You know, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not one to get very uh, deep and personal about my, my life, but I'm not a religious person, but uh, I do find certain places to be special. Uh, this is one of those places. 